say, well, why not? Because this is the Sunday that we come to take communion together. And I don't know about you, but I learn best by seeing. I'm a visual learner. And if we want to teach our children what it means to come to the table, then they need to be here to witness it. Amen? Now, young people, hear me and hear me well. I believe that you can sit still for 30 minutes. I'm not one of these folks that's not convinced. I'm convinced that you can sit still for 30 minutes. Now, prove me right. Amen? Amen. 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 Some parents like Pastor, I don't know. I know, amen. Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at verse 1, but on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in dazzling clothing. And as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Thus ends the reading of our text this morning. For the next few moments, friends, I will share with you from the, sub from the subject, it feels good to be free. It feels good to be free. Yesterday I was in my kitchen at my house and Ava was downstairs helping me snack green beans. I trust that some of y'all know something about that. You snap both sides and you put it in the basket and Ava came down and, but it was only after a few beans she decided that this wasn't exciting enough. So we had on the radio in the background and Anita Baker was singing Sweet Love. And Ava said, I, I don't think I'm going to snap beans anymore. Daddy, I think I'm going to dance. <laughs> so as I snapped beans and as Erica was working on a turkey, Ava was spinning around in the kitchen with not a care in the world. She had a big grin on her face and she was spinning and dancing and doing moves I didn't even know she knew how to do. And it was right at that moment as I looked at my daughter and she began to sing a song that I had never heard before. It came to me in my consciousness, it feels good to be free. 
It feels good to know that there are no longer any restrictions on you, that you have the opportunity to move in the path that you want to move into. And it was right at that moment that Sunday sermon came into focus because I've been preaching all week. And when I told Erica, I said, I need to narrow down and put a pinpoint in what I will tell the people. She looked at me with disdain and said, you not finished yet? <laughs> I said these things aren't like Pez dispenser. You don't just hit the top and it comes out. You got to take some time to wait until the Lord starts speaking to you. And right when I watched my daughter spin in my kitchen, it came to me in my mind that it feels good to be free. But freedom does not come without a cost. Glory. Because I tell you, the road to Calvary was every bit as bad as you thought it was. From Wednesday night into Friday, we were able to walk with Jesus along the way. And it was as bad as you thought it would be. Some folks don't like to stay with the crucifixion too long. It's almost as if you're going down the street and you see the car crash and you wonder why there's so much traffic. But as you get up there, you realize that some folks couldn't mind their business. They came to a pause to see the crash, but they didn't want to stay there too long. Because when you find yourself at the crucifixion, when you walk with Jesus along the way, there sure enough is going to be some blood on the hands of those that crucified our Savior. It was as bad as you think it was. Some folks like to gloss over it as if the movie is what it really was. I know we saw the passion of the Christ. I know we gave our money to Mel Gibson, but a movie can't do justice to the real thing. Oh, I know some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You've been watching bootlegs for years, and you hope that you see the bootleg film, and you are saying to yourself, I hope they will steady out the picture. If you can't say amen, say oh me. Because you've been buying them at the beauty shop anyway. Three for ten. Four for twenty. And you're hoping that it's a clear picture when you get home. But the bootleg can't compare to the real thing. There sure enough was the cat of nine tails on Jesus' back. The fake can't compare to the real thing. They sure enough put a crown of thorns on his head and there was blood coming down his face. The movie can't compare to the real thing. They sure enough put a spear in his side and out came water and blood, I tell you. The real thing was every bit as gruesome. Every bit as bad as you think it was. I know preachers, we try to do the best we can when we preach on what they call Good Friday. We try to do the best we can on Wednesday nights as we look to the seven last words of Jesus. But words can't compare to what Jesus actually went through. And so when we open up the 24th chapter of Luke, it makes sense. It makes sense that the women went to where they thought they ought to go, for they watched themselves when Jesus was killed. It makes sense for them to go early in the morning because their heart was wrapped with pain and they missed their friend Jesus. I tell you, too many folks are too willy-nilly with death. Someone dies and you say, well, the Lord knows. Nobody wants to hear that on the day their loved one goes on. Someone moves on and you think you got the words that the Lord would have you to say. The best thing to do sometimes is just be quiet. And if you can't be quiet, then just say, I'm praying with you and call me if you need me. You don't have to come up with all the answers because there's a man from Galilee who has all the answers. For we see the women went to where they thought they ought to go, Sister Gloria. And the same is true for some of us. We've been traveling to the places that we think we ought to go, looking for what we hope is there. But when we get there, we realize that that wasn't the place to go at all. Because it feels good to be free. I always think about my Jesus sometimes. And I say to myself, would I have come down through 42 generations to be born of a virgin woman and have a body with limitations? I don't know if I would have done that. 
I don't know if I would have given up all the power that he had sitting on the right hand of the Father when you really think about it, beloved, that he was there in the beginning with God. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I don't know if I would have done that, allowed a man who wasn't my daddy to raise me like he was my daddy. I don't know if I would have done that to have some folks talking about me, and I am the one who created them. I don't know if I would have done that. But Jesus decided that I'm going to come into human flesh because I still love you. Some folks, Brother Fry, are use the word love too easily. It flows off of their lips and they don't mean not an ounce of what it means to say I love you. If you know anything about that, say amen. I told the young ladies from Lincoln University last week, watch out when the young man is always talking about he loves you the first day and y'all went to Subway and now he loves you. <laughs> he allowed you to supersize it and get more than more and now he loves you. No, he loves what he can get from you. But sometimes folks gotta realize that when I say I love you, then you have to be able to say what am I willing to sacrifice for you? I don't know if I was Jesus if I would have given it all up for you and me. Yet he did. He came down and allowed them to raise him and grow. And then at 30 years old, he started his earthly ministry. And for three years, he was able to do what folks couldn't believe he could do. He was able to heal the sick and raise the dead. He was able to call the blind man to see and dry up the woman with the issue of blood. He was able to do what folks couldn't believe he could do. I would posit to you this morning, my brothers and sisters, if you find yourself on April 1st, saying to yourself, I don't know about this April Fool's Day. I don't know about this Jesus. I want you to remember that God in the form of Jesus Christ can do exactly what he said he could do. Too many folks have put human restrictions on God, but Jesus has said, I can do all things because me and the Father are one. Some of y'all are saying, I don't know about the miracles that Jesus can do, but Jesus can do exceedingly abundantly. More than we can even ask or think if we will but trust him. It feels good to be free. Jesus was killed. They put him in a borrowed tomb. And then from the tomb, the women came. And when they came, the stone was rolled away. And they realized that Jesus was no longer there. What does that tell us, beloved? It tells us, don't look for life in dead places. Amen. Go to your neighbor and just say, don't look for life. Don't look for life. In dead places. Yeah. Find one more person. Don't look for life. Yeah. In dead places. Yeah. Because see, you can't go to somewhere dead if you've been made free. Yeah. Did you ever notice that Mandela didn't go back to Robin Island because I've been made free? Yeah. For you see, don't go to a space thinking that someone's gonna bless you when that's not the space where the life blood is. You need to go where life is. Yeah. And when Jesus got out of the tomb, he let them know, don't come for me in places that dead folk are, because I am no longer dead. I am risen and risen indeed. Oh, let me see if I can make it plain for you. Some of y'all are going to the wrong friend for advice. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't go to the wrong friend for advice. You can't go to dead places looking for life. Amen. Some of y'all married asking all your single friends for advice in your marriage. You can't go to all the dead places looking for life. You gotta be in spaces where God has said life is. We go into the club looking for life. On Friday night, I was down in Southwest Philadelphia and I was preaching the fourth word. And as it got good to me and Brother Calvin uh, and Sister uh, Karima, they can tell you, they can testify to it. As it got good to me, I started preaching out of my own testimony. And as I started preaching out of my own testimony, I told on myself. Because I said to the folks, I said, 
I was waiting until it was dark for me to go down to Club Gotham. <laughs> and everybody in the place looked at me with an eye like this. <laughs> but see, the truth of the matter was that after I finished preaching, Sister Reed, everybody came up quiet. I was at Gotham too. Hallelujah! <laughs> And therefore, some of us fail to come to the house of God time and time again. And God is saying, will you come to the place where life is everlasting? Because church is one of the few places where folks will love you. They'll kiss on your cheek. You'll leave the church with eight different shades of lipstick. And you'll wonder to yourself, what is going on? But it's amazing to me that they'll love you and build you up. Can you say amen? amen? Some folks, we fail to come to the church house. And we say to ourselves, I don't want to go. It's too early. I, I don't know what they're going to be talking about. They stay too long. But you got to go to places where folks will give you life. Amen. Jesus said, don't look for life in dead places. It feels good to be free. Next, we're able to see in Jesus in John's gospel that John says in chapter 20 that after Jesus got free, after Jesus was able to break through from the tomb, he left his dead stuff there. Look to your neighbor and say, leave some dead stuff alone. I'll find one more person and say, leave some dead stuff alone. Because John says when they entered the tomb, Minister Cook, when they entered the tomb and they did not see Jesus, but they saw the linen that they had wrapped him in. And they saw the face cloth that had gone on his face. For when you were dead, before you came into the tomb, they would take the spice first, they would wash your body. Then they would take the spices and cover your body. And then they would wrap you up in the linen. And then they would put a cloth over your face. But now you have been embalmed before you go into the tomb. But when the women came and realized that Jesus had broke free from the power of sin and death, they were able to see that Jesus had left some dead things behind. I don't know who I'm talking to on this first day of the month of April, but some of us need to leave some dead things behind. You've been carrying them for far too long. Oh, I know what I'm talking about because I've been living long enough to know that what was holding you back in March Today in April, you need to leave it behind. What was holding you back in February, you need to leave it behind you because God says it feels good to be free. Yes. Oh, let me see if I can make it plain. What you've been holding on to since 82, you gotta let it go. What you've been holding on to since 97, you gotta let it go. What you've been holding on since 2001, you gotta let it go. You gotta leave some dead things behind. Jesus wasn't bringing any dead material to him. Uh, see, this idea to say I'm going to bring it with me. God is saying to you, I'm ready for you to do a new thing. But some of us are nervous about this new thing that God wants to do. Because he hasn't given us all the information. Anyone like me? You like to know all the information before something happens? Say, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand. You, you like me. My wife said to me the other day, she said, baby, we're going we're gonna to take a trip in October. Are you available? I said, where are we going? <laughs> she said, well, it's a surprise. I said, I don't know if I want to go. <laughs> Left it alone. She comes back to me two days later, Brother Teron. She said, you never got back to me about whether or not you were free on these dates. I said, you never told me where I was going. <laughs> I like the information. I want to know. But sometimes God is saying, will you trust me that I know more than you? Will you trust me that I'm going to take you down a path that you may not be able to see and be able to comprehend, but I'm ready to do a new thing in your life if you will but leave the dead stuff behind. It feels good to be free. For you see, Galatians 5.1 says it was for freedom 
that Christ set you free. Therefore, stand firm so that you don't allow yourself to be given the yoke of slavery again. Some of us need to walk in the freedom yeah. that God has yeah. given them. The freedom to do what, preacher? The freedom to be a new person. The freedom to be the best man you can be. The best woman you can be. The best worker you can be. The best Christian you can be. Freedom to leave all the past behind. All the sins behind. Freedom to be who God has called us to be. Some of y'all sitting out there and the Lord has called you to preach this gospel. But you like me. You said, I don't know if I can do it. But God is saying, I need you to leave some of those questions behind because I'm ready to do a new thing in your life. Yeah. Some of y'all been saying, I don't know if I can be loved again. My, my last marriage didn't work out. And God is saying, you don't know, but I got a Boris Cadeau ready for you. And you just leave it behind. I probably didn't say his name right to y'all. He broke free of the limitations. Yeah. He was able to let us know, don't look for life in dead places. He said, you got to leave some dead things behind. And when you leave it behind, when you're able not to go to the dead places anymore, yeah. I want you to enter into what God has for you. Find somebody, just say, enter into what God has for you. For you see, the text tells us that when Jesus was on the cross, Jesus was on the cross and he said, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And then we see that it said in Luke 24, don't you remember what Jesus said that after three days and three nights that he's going to come and get his body and he's going to leave those dead things behind for he's going into the place that God has prepared for him. The question is, my brothers and sisters, will we believe God enough to go where God would have us to be? Will we believe God enough, have enough faith to believe that he who began a good work in you will surely bring it to pass? Do we believe God enough that God can take our mistakes and bring about miracles? Do we believe God enough? That this is not the end, but tomorrow is coming your way. Do you believe God enough to enter into what the Lord has for you? See, the question is, I say it, I don't know about you, but I've wondered, God, what do you have in store for me? And the Lord says, I got some things in store for you that you can't even imagine. I just want you to put one foot in front of the other and walk into the breath that God has. Do you believe God enough? Yes. To go where God would have you to be, who God would have you to be, and live how God would have us to live. It feels good yes. to be free. Yes. It's something when you can walk down the street and pick what you want to eat, it feels good yes. to be free. It's amazing when you can go and pick the job that you want to do, it feels good. Hallelujah to be free. It's amazing that you can do whatever you want to do. Sleep in or go to work. Some of y'all need the help right there. Sleep in or, or go to work. I don't know, but I tell you, it feels good to be free, to have the agency of self, to be able to dictate who you will be and at what point you will live your life. But I tell you right now, we have the opportunity, beloved. We have the chance, brothers and sisters, because we who are gathered here today have the free Freedom to praise the Lord, for he is no longer in the grave. He is risen and he has risen in me. We are free to lift our hands and say hallelujah. We are free to sing the glory of God. We are free to speak the victory that God has given us. We are free to walk the way that God wants us to walk. Oh, hallelujah. And talk the way God wants us to talk. We are free. See, that's the thing that blesses me. Brother Theo, that's the thing that blesses me, Brother Tehran. I am free to preach the way I want to preach, to say hallelujah, how I want to say it, to walk how I want to walk. You have freedom. But don't lose your freedom the wrong way. 
you are free to leave that destructive relationship. Don't be free and go back into it. You are free to be who you want to be. I tell you, don't allow someone else to convince you otherwise. But Jesus got out the tomb, and I can see him now. Ah, it feels good to get rid of that earthly heart. I'm free now. I can see Jesus now. Ooh, I've been waiting to stretch out, but them feet been causing me some problems. I can see Jesus now. I am free now by the trappings of life. I'm free from what folks would try to limit me to be. I am free to be who the Father has called me to be. That's all right. As the musician plays, I wish you this day to use your freedom in a way that betters your life. Use your freedom to say sorry if you hurt somebody. Yes. It feels good to be free. Use your freedom to be who God would have you to be. It feels good to be free, thank you. Yes. Use your freedom to dress up nice and come to church. It feels good. It feels good to be free. Use your freedom to cry tears when you miss somebody. It feels good yes. to be free. I tell you this, you have to take advantage of your freedom while you can. Because there's going to come a time when no man can work, Wilson. There's going to come a time when there's no more oil for the lamps. There's going to come a time that time has simply slipped away. So if you've never received Jesus Christ, Today is the day I want you to use your freedom. I want you to use your freedom to walk into the newness that God has for you. The love that God's able to receive and lavish you with. I want you to be free to cry out, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I want you to be free to, to depend on the mercy and the grace of God. I want you to be free to be able to be who God wants us to be. I want you to be free, Sister London, to wave your palm and say, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. If you've never received Jesus, I invite you to come. If you want a good church to be a member of, come on and join us. I promise you this. We preach this gospel of Jesus Christ. I want you to know I've been to school. I, they, I've earned my, my degrees. They on the wall. I put them up there so folks feel good when they come in. <laughs> and then if I go certain places, Brother Brandon, they say the Reverend Doctor has arrived. <laughs> but I tell you this, that doesn't qualify me to be the pastor. What qualifies me to be the pastor is that I believe with every ounce of my being that God Almighty has called me to the work. If he called you to the work, he's going to empower you to do the work. So if you want a good church to be a member of, come on over. Now, why do you say good, pastor? I say good because none is good but the Father. And I tell you, we are right in the middle of that. Amen. If you want someone to pray with you, I invite you to come. We'd love to pray with you. Let us stand. Reverend Johnson will lead us in our, our song. Now is the time to come. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, y'all.